Welcome to the Moto Stop Show right here in beautiful Jacksonville, Florida, in the home of the Big Deal Production Studio. I'm CJ Harris, your host, and we have a great epic show tonight. As always, we got to thank the Big Deal Production for coming on board with us and help producing this. It's going to be a little unique tonight. This is our first live produced broadcast as we're trying some new software. We're trying some new stuff. We got to give a big shout out to Goose, who's behind the, uh, whatever the thing is over there, the computers, mic mixers, the DJ, the ones and the twos and the threes and the fours. Goose is over there holding it down for us for sure. I already see David Medoros on here, the number 54 coming out strong. He says the Moto Maniac is on board, so it's good to see everybody out here. Episode 24, man, it's been amazing. I can't believe we've already went through 24 episodes as a, the di executive director and producer are shaking their head back there. And, uh, you know, seems like just yesterday. <laughs> yeah, some are shaking their head yes and some are shaking their head no, but it all whirls around in a circle, right? It seems like just yesterday we had this idea of uh, coming up with, you know, a, a podcast slash YouTube show, which kind of morphed into a broadcast on Facebook, which now we are morphing and we continue to grow uh, into a live produced production show which we will continue to get better and better as the, you know, we learn and develop the software. Got to give a big shout out to Poi Dog at the Wednesday, uh, weekend, weekend, Wednesday weekend race report. Sorry, Poi, we'll get it right. Um, where, you know, watched and uh, learned a lot from him. He amazing job over there on Wednesday nights, eight o'clock. The NDA Action Sports is the place to go. Make sure you check them out. There's a lot of coverage on the local motocross uh, community. So uh, looking forward to watching and tuning into that show tomorrow night. But right now it's all about the Moto Stop show and a great week of racing we got, or weekend of racing we got to talk about. We got to kick things off though on a sad note. Obviously, uh, you guys probably in the motocross, supercross, motorcycle community uh, has, has heard Nikki Hayden passed away. Um, very unfortunate. You know, I kind of distanced myself from a the sport bike, super bike, um, MotoGP world a few years ago, just because I, you know, so developed and uh, devoted to the motocross community and the supercross community. But Nikki, all the way back to uh, back in the day, was one of my favorite riders. I remember him coming on as a rookie. Uh, and if you guys follow me on our social media, whether it's the Moto Stop Show page, uh, my Instagram. It doesn't matter. I posted up a, a video or a picture that I drew a few years ago and, um, you know, just just of his bike and stuff. And it, it's kind of really hit home because in our world, you know, we train a lot. The motocross, supercross community, we train a tremendous amount. And a lot of that's on road bikes. And it's very unfortunate how Nicky died. I mean, the guy spends his entire life or majority of his life, you know, running speeds of mock 1,000, you know, over 200 miles an hour pretty much majority of his life and he's out there on a road bike maybe going 25 miles an hour and because of the, the, the you know, lack of common sense and, you know, the looking out of other people, the drivers out there on the road it is really the reason he, he's dead. So, um, you know, we see all you guys jumping on here. Now, it is going to be a little delayed with this new um, software and stuff. So, I see your comments. Frankie, what's going on, buddy? Uh, I've seen um, Moto FX, Moto X FX in the house. We'll get it right, Dean. Um, but a couple things that I wanted to share about, you know, about Nikki Hayden. Hayden was born in Owensboro, Kentucky. You know, he started road racing with the CMRA. And a really cool thing that most people don't know, or if you, uh, you, you, you followed his career, then you do know, but he started when he was actually pretty small. And a lot of times at the local events and stuff, they had to put him in the back of the, the starting grid because he couldn't touch the ground. So his family would hold him up so he could take off. Um, he started uh, at 17. He was racing for factory Honda aboard an RC45. Uh, while still in high school, 99, he won the AMA Super Sport Championship aboard a privateer Honda. And 2001 was his first full season on the AMA Superbike Racer. He came in within 40 points of winning the championship that year. I believe he got third. Um, in 2002, he actually won it aboard an RC51, RVT1000 there. So pretty cool. Um, you know, he won the Daytona 200 that year. And uh, just an amazing guy. I mean, truly, we lost a, a legend and a great guy. Um, 
a champion, everything else in the motorcycle community, whether it's off-road, on-road. I hate losing anybody, so it's, uh, it, it's truly a tragedy, but best wishes go out to his whole family and everybody, you know, that uh, supported him. Tom Gardner, we see you on there, buddy. Tell Ryan we said hello. As you guys are on our Facebook Live, we welcome you. Don't forget you can always check out all of our shows, episodes, everything, whether it's via the YouTube page. You can find it at uh, YouTube. Just find the Motostop Show. You can go to themotostopshow.com. Available in podcast at iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher Radio. Uh, all you got to do is click like, subscribe. You get all the latest and greatest of what we got to give you. Uh, back to the motocross community from the Motostop Show. Tom Gardner, CJ the DJ, the best in the business. I appreciate that, Mr. Gardner. All right, so, um, you know, on a light side of things, we kind of lost another legend in the sport, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, he didn't pass away, just retired, and we're talking about the past uh, champion, Ryan Dungey. You know, the number five aboard the Red Bull KTM mounted bike, uh, Dungey retired after his Supercross championship going out on top which i'm kind of okay uh he's put in his time he's put in his effort he's put in everything and uh now it's time for him to settle down and enjoy his you know his little nest egg that he's built so a couple things that i do want to do a full-blown there's so much information about ryan dungy um it's in the works hunter hawkins another guy that rides at ktm so perfect time to say what's up to the hawk out there aka uh what, what do they call you hunter the pax pax uh I don't know. Forgot what his damn nickname was. But uh, anyhow, back to Ryan Dungey. You know, he's put in all his time, and he's gave us a many years of great racing uh, action, you know, including some championships that he's won. I don't know if you guys know, he's won the 2009 AMA West Coast Supercross Lights Champion, 2009 AMA 250 Motocross Champion, a 2009 Motocross The Nation cha Champion, 2010 AMA Supercross Champion, uh, Supercross and 450, Supercross 450 champion. That was his rookie season. 2010, his 450 motocross champion in his rookie season. His 2010 motocross the nation's champion. Um, I mean, a just ton of results from Ryan Dungey. And with the effort, the training that goes into being somebody in that top level athlete like Ryan Dungey was, it's no wonder that he, he couldn't sustain that kind of training for I don't believe much longer. You know, he's got on the Alden Baker program a few years ago, and it elevated him to the top of the level. He was on the top, but I believe it took him to the next level. But how long can you sustain training at that level? You know, all you do is train, bike, ride, train, bike, ride, and you barely eat anything in there. So, you know, congratulations to Ryan Dungey on an amazing career. Um, I know Red Bull KTM is, you know, heartbroken to lose him. But I'm sure somebody else is going to step right in and fulfill that position. Um, you know, another guy that's on the KTM just jumped on our live chat down here is Jake Rakis. Uh, maybe here. Jake, put in your resume. KTM's looking for somebody else. You could be the guy, buddy. Um, Marvin Muskin stepped up, doing a great job. We'll see what he has to uh, give us in the outdoor Lucas Oil Outdoor AMA Championship coming up. All right, so we're going to kick things off. You know, we got a lot to cover with Hangtown. Hangtown's came and gone. Before we want to jump into that, as always, we got to give thanks to our resident trainer, Damian Plotz, over at Plotz MX, uh, where you can get dialed in, hooked up, trained up, everything you need. All you got to do is hook up with Damian Plotz, and he will get you figured out. So let's see what tom gardner says real quick working in the garage on the 991 kawasaki and listening to the moto stop show it doesn't get much better than that we love it we love it um so plot mx training tech tip comes to you this week uh and we got to thank damien for you know getting these out to us and everything so he says the mental side of mx when you believe you can succeed and that goes a long ways so there's not a whole lot that we can elaborate on that, but I do want to talk about that a little bit. You can see it in the local level extremely a lot, but you, if you watch the pros, you can also see it. You get a great race. Take Justin Barsha a few years. What was it? Uh, Iron Man when he, the mud race, he dominated it. He didn't dominate because 
the mud conditions. He knew he was good in the mud conditions. Mentally got ready, prepared, and he went out and physically got the job done. But that mentality, momentum carried over into the weeks to come, the weekends that he was racing. So the mental part of the game sometimes is stronger and bigger than the ability a part of the game. Take, for instance, you go on a local level. You go out to a track, you see a big jump. And as I get older, this probably relates more to me than anybody because I, uh, you know, I'm getting older and wiser and dumber or smarter one way, but I see a big jump and I'm like, man, I don't need to send that thing. My ability is probably there. My ability will take me up and over that jump, but mentally I'm not prepared to do that or not really willing to take the risk. Uh, the risk versus the re risk versus the reward, or the risk versus the fall, we should say in motocross. So sometimes I'm not willing to take that, and it's all that mental part of the game. So when you get ready to go out there, you need to be mentally prepared, ready to achieve whatever you want to accomplish in that upcoming, whether it's a race, practice, um, and take that you know same mentality outside of racing, outside of motorcycles. If remember, if you can, if you can, when you believe it, you can succeed at it. Okay. So Damien Plotz, Plotz MX Tech Tip is mental this week. You know, if you can see it, you can believe it. And if you can believe it, you can succeed it, okay? So keep your mental strong. Got John Mortberg on here. We got Andrew on here. Andrew says, I can relate. Again, guys, some of the, the comments are going to be a little delayed, uh, more than, more than uh, normal, just because it's the software we're using. But please put them down there, and we're going to try to check them quite often. Um, and maybe, I don't know how we can do this, or we're only getting two comments at a time. If we can maybe monitor that, so if I miss one, we can scroll back somehow. Yeah. Goose, the producer came in and said, exec, or no, director, not the producer. We about gave Goose a promotion, didn't we? So, um, Damien, thank you, Plots and Max. Make sure you guys check out Damien Plots over at Bosswood Creek for anything and everything that you guys need. Our camera is doing all kinds of stuff there. All right. Let's talk about Hangtown. First, the biggest fail of the week was the triple up at Hangtown 150. It's been talked on every media, every podcast, everything that you possibly can see. The, the Fly 150, it's the right hand jump coming straight out of the... Um, corner, you guys probably seen it. Nobody was doing it. Josh Grant tried it in press day, blew it out, cased a triple, you know, done. They they couldn't figure it out. So middle of the motos, it goes out there. They try to groom it, still not able to get it done. I don't know what to do as a track on an owner track. You know, there's a lot of people that tune in that do own track, so maybe they'll have different insights. But how do you put a jump out there that the top level riders in the world aren't willing to jump. Maybe it goes back to that mental thing. Too steep of a takeoff from what I read. Yeah, John, John says too, too steep of a takeoff, but also, all right. So we got our comments figured out now. Too steep of a takeoff and the corner was too soft. So, Absolutely, it just didn't develop, and I mean, they should have did something. Should have knocked down the land, and they should have did something. I believe, you know, obviously it created good racing. And I talk to a lot of young kids. It's not always about jumping the jump, and it doesn't happen often. But sometimes it's about learning how to get the speed back to the ground and getting over the next obstacle. Which, if it's a triple, it's another hump. So you got to learn how to soak that up, and that's how you become faster. Uh, and in this case, that's what you had to do uh, to, you know, win the race. And if you watched. Eli Tomac, we saw what he could do. I'm pulling up my comments, guys, so we could uh, check it out. So we got a lot of people on here right now. All right. If you guys got something we want to talk about, make sure you put it down there in the comments and we'll get to it for sure. Let's see. What else are we going to talk about? We got the Fly 150. What would you guys think of the track? You like it? Dislike it? For me personally, I really truly enjoyed it. I like when they throw in different obstacles. Um, and, you know, Hangtown has what they started, I think, 
three or four years ago. I should have did my research on that, but I'm going to say it's probably four years ago now. The half pipe. You know, it doesn't always work. And if you didn't get to watch the race, it's, it's literally a half pipe. You're going to come in on the left-hand side of it. You drop in, and you kind of use the berm of the back of the half pipe. You come back down, and you're going to take another left-hand corner and jump out of it. And I'll tell you what, man, when Alex Martin was coming up in that 250 class, it was a pleasure to get to watch him go in and out of that thing. You know, most of the time they're coming up and they're trying to like soak up that coming out of the, the half pipe. Dude, A Mart was just coming out and he carried so much speed when he was trying to track down Osborne, he was sending it and just launching out of it. It looked pretty cool. John, unfortunately, I haven't watched it. I just read about it. Well, Stay tuned, John, because you're going to need to know everything you need to know right here. Quentin Bigelow, most GPs have mega jumps. Not everyone jumps. Maybe the top five or six guys. I would agree 100%. Quentin. And Quentin, thanks for jumping on here. Uh, good friend out there. A lot of local races we see him. Comments are coming in. All right, so break down the 250 class with you guys. Uh, first off, Adam Cincerello in the first moto, what an amazing job. Comes out, gets the whole shot, looked really strong. And, you know, he stayed, uh, I want to say he led for like three or four laps. And then Zach Osborne finally came around and got him. Zach Osborne was on a complete different level in this race, these 250s. John, we're going to get to the 450s in just a second and talk exactly what he said. How about the JA21 eye injury? Pretty crazy. It is. We're going to break that down for you guys as well. So Adam Cincerello, moto number one, went out, put in a great solid result and uh, came, I believe he got second in that first moto. Yeah, so he went 2-8 on the day uh, for a fifth overall. Very hot, very tough, very rutted track. It was almost one of those tracks where you had to kind of pull back to give more later in the day. And the riders like Adam Cincerello, who put it all out there in the first moto, I think that's really what drained him for the second moto. He just didn't have enough gas reserve in the tank. Um, but what about Austin Forkner? That kid had a phenomenal ride. So in... The first moto, he had. First moto, he had a crash, I think. I believe he had a crash um, and came back to 11th place. And then in the second moto, I think he had bike issues, pulled into the pits, got it unplugged, and then came back to a second ride, a second place finish. But. Not just any second place finish. He had pressure, if you guys remember, from Jeremy, Jeremy Martin, who also had bike problems in the first moto. His Geico Honda just shut off. I haven't heard the official results of what it was. Um, yeah, Paul Fleming says right there he had a mechanical electrical problem. And CJ Rosa throwing out shots down there. He had a KX problem. Yeah, but I don't know if you've seen, uh, he had enough power under that KX, CJ, to pull in the pits and come back and still kick everybody's ass. So it's, uh, it was on like Donkey Kong when that kid came out of that gate, that's for sure. And Paul did. I wasn't going to touch base on it, Paul, but since you brought it up, I will. Paul says apparently he cut the track to get up to the pits. He did. He cut over, I believe, 40-something seconds off the track, maybe even more. Uh, but I guess if nobody protests him, it's no big deal. He pulled into the, the mechanics area. They unplugged the ECU. They plugged it back in. He was good to go, got back out there. But the, the best part about Fortner was the charge when Jeremy Martin put on him. You know, he didn't buckle under pressure. He rose to the occasion as a, I guess he's not really a rookie. He, he, you know, last year was his rookie season, but still somebody that doesn't have that much experience in a you know, the, the outdoor racing in the pro class. I mean, I was highly and thoroughly impressed with Austin Forkner there. CJ Rosa says, you see the rookie KTM rider with the hole shot? The rookie KTM rider with the hole shot. All right, now you're testing me. Who was the rookie KTM rider? Paul, help me out. Who was the rookie KTM rider with the hole shot? 
Oh, Cantrell. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Man, mind blank right there. Seemed like I was doing that all day Sunday too, just calling the race out of PAX track. I'd literally be talking and like just forgot everything I was going to say, so I had to stop and be like, uh, yeah, who is that? But yeah, Cantrell. Um, Sean Cantrell with a great ride. Welcome everybody to the live feed. If you guys are just jumping on, we are on Facebook Live, the Moto Stop Show. Obviously, you know that. But what you don't know is the comments are going to be a little delayed tonight. We are doing a live produced show. We're trying to uh, get more like the NDA Action Sports, the weekend wake, weekend, the Wednesday weekend race report. That's a tongue twister. Um, Paul Fleming, I forgot to give him a shout out. He is over on there with Poi Dog, and they do a great job. So. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we liked what the, we saw over there, and we're trying to learn how to develop and become more like that, and we could produce the show as we go. So, uh, J-Mart bike problems with the Geico Honda. We just talked about that. Did you guys see Dylan Ferrandez's big crash? Oh, my God. I thought it was going to be a lot worse, but I guess he's okay. Um, coming over there, swapped out, just slammed himself into the ground. Zacho, Zach Osborne, we know he's going to be good, but did we know he's going to be this good as he comes into the 2007 Lucas Oil outdoor series motocross just freaking on fire and it really looked like it didn't matter what anybody did he was going to be untouchable unstoppable the entire race going one one um, and going to lead us out with a total of 50 points there so as we jump into well, let's talk a little bit about we're headed to glenn helen so glenn helen obviously a world famous track out there uh, probably one of my favorite tracks to watch for sure. All right, so you know what we'll do? We got a lot of people that always ask me what's in the cups, especially when Carl Rutledge is on here. Let's play a game tonight. We'll see if we can't find something to give away. But guess what's in the cup? And if you comment right, maybe we'll give you something. But uh, it's probably not what you think. Or maybe it is. But anyhow, all right, so as we head over to Glen Helen, a couple things. 250 last year, Alex Martin went 2-2 on the day for an overall. Jeremy Martin went 4-1, so we know both of the Martin boys are going to be pretty good at Glen Helen. Mike, you are not right. Quentin Bigelow says sauce. <laughs> Put some sauce in it. Um... Webb went 1-4 for the day for a third overall last year at Glen Helen. So as he moves into the 450 class, a little, uh, mm, I guess a decent ride for him. He'll probably pick up steam as, as Cooper Webb normally does in the 450 class, but um, not really what I expected, especially he was kind of up front early. So we'll see what, uh, what that has to do. You know, maybe he can pull out that 450 going to be a little different ride than what he's accustomed to as we're going to talk a little bit about the 250s at Glen Helen here in a second but you know the 450s are going to have a lot more power may be a little easier to ride uh Fortner went 3-5 last year with a crash <laughs> Mitch wins Mitch wins he said J3 so if you guys didn't see the comment Mitchell Rakus said J3's in my cup and uh I, I, we were just talking about that earlier tonight. Uh, you guys don't know, but Brian has a very severe cold and uh, we think sinus infection. So I said, you know, if you put J3 or if you drink J3, it might fix it. I mean, it fixes everything else. <laughs> and then Mitch Rakis comes on and says J3. Epic. Uh, and no, nobody's got it right yet. It's not uh, Pepsi. It's not uh, iced tea. It's not Mountain Dew just for... You guys don't know, I don't drink any sodas, but so that may eliminate some stuff. Um, so Fortner going 3-5, and he had a crash last year at Glen Helen. So we know he's got that bike figured out, dialed in there, and obviously he's going to be really good with what we've seen, moto number two at Hangtown. So I look for him to be out front. Alex Martin, obviously we've seen the, the pressure that he can put on um, at Hangtown. He looks like he's ready. And Jeremy Martin, you know, he came back after that bike problem. So going into Hangtown in the 250, or excuse me, into Glen Helen in the 250 class, I guess I would say my predictions would have to be, I'd probably go with Alex Martin, Austin Forkner, Jeremy Martin. 
top three right there, however you do it, top three. Um, but don't count on Aaron Plessinger. Aaron Plessinger is going to be right there in that fourth or fifth spot, and maybe even that third spot, maybe even uh, push out Jeremy Martin there. A couple things you got to remember when we go to the, the Glen Helen, they have some epic hills. Um, if you haven't seen a Glen Helen race or anything, I'll tell you what, go watch um, Jesse, I think Jesse Nelson had a pretty cool video last year, his GoPro video. Pretty sick um, on YouTube, and it is insane. You know, as they come down, they, they make this insane uphill climb, right? They make a right hand, they kind of jump down. They're on the gas for a quarter of this downhill before they completely let off the gas. And when I say quarter, I'm not talking about a 30-foot hill. This thing is far. So they're on the gas for probably two seconds, and then they coast for 15, which normally never happens in a motocross. You're either on the gas or on the brakes. You know, So when they come down, that hill is so steep. Literally, okay, they're coming down. You know, I don't even know what kind of angle it is, but... It's pretty insane. Now, in saying that, with the hills on the 250, it's going to be a huge separator from the privateer class to the factory guys because the factory guys obviously have a little more power in their bikes and, and whatnot, you know, better ma uh, machines. But even with that being said, the 250s are going to be robbed of power on these hills. It's going to take everything they got to get up and over them um, and sometimes not even able to jump some of the big jumps out there. So it's going to be really smooth. You're going to have to carry your throttle or carry your speed around. Um, stay on the gas. You're going to have to work some outside lines. The hill we were just talking about is going to be a split lane at the bottom. And the inside line, I mean, if you try to take it, you're probably going to lose two or three spots guaranteed. You're going to have to carry your momentum. And it's not that it's because it's, you know, slower. That It's half the track. I mean, it is because it's slower. The space is about, you know, half the distance. Going outside is the way long way. But you're able to carry that momentum up into that climb. And it's literally, literally a hill climb at Glen Helen. Brian, you may know what's in it, but uh, employees are not allowed to guess. So you lose. All right, so uh, split lane sections. You know, at, at Glen Helen, they normally do split lane sections. And it, it's one of the few racetracks I think it actually really works. A lot of passing spots. Uh, really cool stuff. So... Um, Remember last year we were leaving Glen Helen and we, Alex Martin was our points leader. So, you know, if we go into there again and Amart wins, it wouldn't shock me that he could leave Glen Helen as the points leader again. Uh, yeah. Pretty much all I got on that. What did you guys think? Hills are so steep, TV doesn't know Justin's. Quentin, you just said it 100% correct. I mean, literally, if you watch it just on the TV, you don't know what it is. I'd recommend going and find some GoPro footage on somebody's helmet on YouTube and watching it. It is insane to see how steep these hills are. Um, I, I mean, truly, you just can't understand exactly how steep they are until you, you physically go there or you, you get a reference point from a GoPro video. What did you guys think of uh, Hangtown's track, and what do you guys think of Glen Helen? Paul, I know you got some comments if you're on there. I'd love to see them. Brian Douglas says, I actually watched the race and was blown away by the final race. Get the 450s already. Get to the 450s already. Quentin Bigelow says, walk it, walk up it. Isn't going to happen. Well, Probably for two reasons. One, because I'm not putting that much effort into walking. Come on, look at me. I'm way out of shape right now. And two, yeah, it's that steep. You're not going to walk up it. If you ever, you know, something else, I said go find a YouTube video of somebody riding. Find a YouTube video of somebody crashing on it is even better. Fall down, and they're literally on the side of the jump like this trying to get up, and normally they have to go back down. Paul Fleming says, I wonder if Jody's going to build a 400-foot uphill quad. <laughs> Uh, could. Mark Miller, the entire state of Florida doesn't have a hill that compares. That is correct, Mark. James Dale just jumped on. I love all the comments and everything coming. Guys, don't forget to make sure you like, subscribe, check out our YouTube page. Make sure you share it so we can continue to grow as you guys continue to grow with us. So, Brian in there wants us to talk about the 450s. 
It's not like anything really happened in the 450 class, Brian. I don't really know what you're excited about. Um, let me get my 450. We all know, we all know that a Kawasaki won. Is that a shocker? Shocker that the Kawasaki won? No, because they're the damn best. That's why. Hey, don't believe me? Just ask Quentin. You don't believe him? Just ask Paul. And Tyler Payne used to ride a Kawasaki. I think he's on a KTM now, so we can't talk to Tyler anymore. But he does, Tyler Payne does say, Hangtown was no joke. Ruts were gnarly. Tomac is going to sweep it. I believe so. There's talk to Tomac going 24-0. Now, obviously, that is a huge task to handle. But do you think Tomac has it in him? I mean, obviously, he has the, the heart, the determination. Um, Tyler Payne says, still ride a Cowie. All right, Tyler, we're still friends then. Um, you know, 24-0 is so hard for multiple reasons. One, just for instance, bike problems. We've seen Austin Forkner obviously had ECU problem. Uh, I'm not really sure what the issue was. It was very weird how they just unplugged it, plugged it back in, and it was good to go. The only thing I could think is maybe that it, the bike didn't map itself correctly um, when they started it. It had some kind of little glitch in there. But Geico Honda, we've seen, uh, we've seen Yamahas have problems. If a Kawasaki has no power, has a 260 foot, hold on, let me read that, Quentin. If a Kawasaki has no power, has a 260-pound fat boy pull some, pull some any hole shot. I can vouch for that. And the thing rips with them. So, um, Goose says his bike was a Kawasaki. Threw me for a loop over there, Goose, again. What are your thoughts on Josh Grant, 33, Glen Helen, come up? Thunder Valley, two tracks he does good at. Well, Paul, I'm glad... You ask because if you look on my notes, I actually did some work and I put Josh Grant because I wanted to talk to talk about him. Uh, obviously, we've seen what he did at Hangtown, which was unbelievable. I wasn't expecting Josh Grant to come out and go 3-3 on the day for a third overall. I don't think anybody out there was expecting Josh Grant to come out on the Monster Energy Kawasaki and go 3-3 on the day. Just like Paul Fleming said, and that's the Paul Fleming over there from the weekend Wednesday weekend race report. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with that tonight. Um, you know, two tracks that he is dominant at is Glen Helen, which last year, Glen Helen, he went 6-6 six, six for a 6 overall. So he's very consistent. I look forward, I mean, his, his stamina looked like he was good. His shape, he was in shape, obviously. I mean, to be as hot as it was, a rough track, stay 3-3. Three, three, and it wasn't like, you know, the rest of the, track or, or uh, pack crashed, he did his job. He was riding very well. So I, I say definitely another podium. Does he have what it takes to beat Marvin Muskin? I'd like to see what you guys think down here. Uh, podium in Vegas, podium at Hangtown. Confidence is running high. Paul Fleming just said it, just like we talked about mental. I definitely think it's a podium. But what I'm asking and what I want to know, do you guys think he's got what it takes to step up and put – Marvin Muska into that second place position or that third place position and be second on the podium. I don't think he has Eli Tomac speed. Um, although he, you know, it's Josh Grant. He very well could come out at Glen Helen and literally win this thing. And none of us would be surprised by, you know, a little bit, but I think Eli Tomac is on a completely different level right now. Um, all right. Got some comments. I want to catch up on our comments real quick, guys. So, Mark Miller, have another sip. Yes, sir. Don't mind if I do. It keeps my vocal cords lubricated so I can project my voice better for you guys. It's what it's in there for, okay? Dean MC says, Brop, Moto XF, Moto XFX in the house. We appreciate you following, Dean. Good to see you out of the track this weekend. Tyler Payne says, dude, I'm pumped for Josh Grant, 33. I was pulling for him. That second moto, Glen Helen, is his track. He won MXGP last year, right? Yes, he did. Now, in fairness, though, not a lot of people showed up. So, I mean, I, I, he did win. I guess you got to be there, you know, to beat him. But Marv is fast. I don't know if Grant can hang. Coming from John Mortberg. 
Kurt Go just got on. That would be Robbie, who had a phenomenal weekend. We're going to talk a little bit about local racing at the end of the show, but that's Robbie Go's dad, who had a phenomenal weekend out of Pax Track, got himself some wins. Uh, Quentin Bigelow, he has hot flashes, always has. Grant is doing well, finally healthy. He is, and most, uh, if you guys know, he went out and he didn't race um, outdoors last year. Monster Energy Kawasaki said, we want you to get your heels fixed. Was it outdoors? Yeah. Yeah, outdoors. Um, so he went and got both ankles and his, his feet fixed. He's been having problems for a few years with that. And he actually contributes all the success that he's had with Vegas and uh, Hangtown to his ankles. He said, I can train now. I can, you know, there's no pain down there. It's good to go. So let's see. I mean, maybe Josh Grant has turned the page. Maybe it's the Josh Grant that we've all expected and always wanted to see. Paul Fleming said, not to be a hater, and I hope I'm wrong, but I think Josh Grant, 33, could throw down Moto 1, but it might be done in Moto 2. I think he'll be consistent rather than explosive. Well, I agree, but I was going back to Moto 2. I mean, he didn't fade that hard in Moto 2, which was really hot. I mean, obviously, it's going to be hot again in Glen Helen, but I, I think we may be in for a show. I, I hope we see the Josh Grant 33 show. Um, you know, hopefully he gives us a better podium interview than he did at Vegas that was so weird and awkward if you guys didn't see it go back and look at it he was like you know I think trying to be cool but he's like ah, coming at you and stuff it was a little strange all right so uh moto one Justin Barsha gets together with uh Wilson they go down the first corner crash both of them had great rides came back and uh where did Barsha go in moto number one? I think back to 11th, maybe? Let's see. Yeah, Justin Barsha got 11th. Went 11-5 for a 10th overall. And John said, how did Baggett do? Blake Baggett went 6-8 for a 7th overall in the day, John. Paul Fleming says, I think Marvin Muskin is a little better fitness-wise than Josh Grant, 33 but Marvin Muskin isn't on ET3 level. Right, well, obviously, he's better fitness, but we got to go back to that Kawasaki thing. I mean, Marvin Muskin ain't on a Kawasaki, so he's already at a disadvantage right there when he shows up to the races. I'm just telling you guys right now. Wilson did really good. Yeah, absolutely, Wilson did. You know, they were dead last. That's what I was getting at, Quentin. Um, dead last him and... Justin Barsha, who, you know, actually rode pretty well. Their, their rides kind of got shadowed. Uh, but Wilson went, what did I just tell you? 10-4 for fifth overall. I mean, a phenomenal ride by Dean. Um, Brock Tickle, 7-7 seven, seven for a sixth overall. Cole Seeley went 4-12 for a ninth overall. Bogle, 8-10 for 11th overall. And Weston Pike went... Uh, Let's get it out here. 12-1 for a 12th overall. What about Christian Craig, who went 9-14 for a 13th overall? Um, we'll get to that in just a second, John. I see what you said. What John Moorberg says, what hit jo uh, Jason Anderson in the eye? But what about Christian Craig? I want to knock this one off my list here. Great start in the first moto, out to a hole shot. Looked like he... You know, had some speed. Obviously, he didn't have the speed to hold off, you know, Josh Grant, uh, Marvin Muskin, or Eli Tomac. But I think he, my opinion, if he didn't crash, maybe got fourth place, you know, that first moto. What do you guys think if, if uh, obviously, if you didn't see it, you can't tell me. But if Craig didn't crash, what would he have got in that first moto? And then how would that affect the second moto? I think he spent all his gas out there trying to, you know, go, 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 catch back up. That... Just like uh, Adam Cicerilla, he didn't have any gas left in the tank. He spin it. So the second moto comes out, and he was just done. Let's not forget Wilson lives in the outdoor champion. Oh, was the outdoor champion. Absolutely, Wilson was an outdoor lights champion for sure. And Wilson's probably one of the best in the class. You know, coming back, put in a full Supercross season, injury-free. We should see great things out of Wilson for sure. Um, any thoughts as we move on? I'm going to catch up on your comments as we move on. But any thoughts on Craig, what you guys think, moving up to the 450 class and where he would have placed and what he would have did? Anderson's crash, John. John Mortenberg asked me. 
So what happens when he went down? I guess a rock, as he went down, a rock hit him in the face at the same time, or a rock laying on the ground is what hit him. Cut open his eye. I forget the exact number of stitches, but he got stitches in between motos. Um, when he got up, the blood was already gushing in his eye, so that's why he didn't even try to get back on the, the bike. Uh, went straight to the went straight to the medical, and then he took out. Who did he take out? He took out two riders. I'm drawing a blank again. Took out two riders um, trying to get off the track. So I think Justin Barcher was one. I don't know if it was Wilson or not. But anyway, uh, Anderson came back to a great ride. You know, in the second moto, he went. Let's see. What did Anderson do? So Anderson went 39, first moto six in the second moto for a 14th overall. I mean, come back six with stitches in it. Yeah, it was horrible. I don't know if you guys seen the picture. The blood was gushing down pretty good. Uh, Bigelow says Craig should kill it. Did extremely well on that. TLD Honda 450 a few years back. Yeah, don't forget, he did ride for Honda uh, when he retired uh, before he came back. So he did do really well. We'll see what happens. What about a somebody we all know, Zach Bell, making his uh, 450 debut here, going 27-21 for a 26 overall. We look for solid stuff out of Zach Bell. I don't know uh, how much he's been putting into the program or whatnot. You know, had a ton of injuries. You guys may remember... Uh, was it Texas where he scrubbed the triple, went off, and, I mean, literally pancaked in the ground. Looked like the guy was dead but got back up, LCQ. I think he – did he come back to win that race or something? Something extremely cool. But um, broke his collarbone and actually had, a, you know, a huge infection in, in his body after his surgery. So Zach Bell has been fighting off a lot of tough injuries in his career. I'd love to see that kid make a good comeback. Do something with him. Do something out there. All right, Tomac. Uh, in the second start, you know, Tomac was a top ten. Made quick moves all the way up to the front. Um, first moto, he had a bobble. I don't know if you guys seen it, but he uh, it was kind of unique. He comes down, he gets off balance a little bit, puts the front end into a rut, not straight. Tucks it, flips over, and uh, he bobbled, but had enough room to get back up. Tyler Payne says he's been riding Enduros. Oversized gas tank and all. He did. So Zach Bell went out there with a big gas tank on. I don't really know what he was thinking. Um, I guess he was ready for the day, ready for the long haul there. Paul Fleming said he won the LCQ. I think that's what it was. What crashed his brain out in the motor stop. c -Rut on here. What's up, Carl? What do you think of the new produced uh, production thing going on? I don't know if you've seen it, but on... When we jumped on Facebook Live, we had a, uh, like our intro like we normally do in the YouTube show and stuff. So we're learning. We're trying to get going, trying to figure this thing out. All right. So the 450 is going into Hangtown. Dungey last year went 1-2. Obviously, we know he's not in the picture. Roxon went 4-1. He's not going to be in the picture this year. Tomac went 3-3. We obviously know where Tomac stands. So... It'd be a no-brainer. Tomac is the favorite to win. Glenn Helen. Anderson, 2016, went 2-5. Don't forget, Anderson came back with stitches in his face to a... What did I just tell you it was? A sixth-place finish. Sixth place in moto number two. So, Glenn Helen, he could do really, really good. Kennard, not in the picture, but he went 7-4 last year for a fifth overall. And then uh, we had Grant... JG goes 6'6 six, six for 6 overall. Going into Glen Helen, I think right now you got to go with Eli Tomac, obviously. It's almost going to be a flip of a coin for Keith Ulrich from Stellar MX. What's up, buddy? Um, they're on Moss on here. We see all you guys. Keith, how is uh, Hope doing? We had uh, Hope out at PAX. I think she cracked her femur and had some other injuries. Um, pretty gnarly crash. I think she's doing okay, but uh, if Keith can give us an update, we'll update everybody while we're live on here. We're wishing the best for her as well. 
Josh Grant, top three. Keith Ulrich says, who's going to be racing amateur racing at Gatorback? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a flip of a quarter, honestly, Keith, for me with Josh Grant and Marvin Muskin. We know Josh Grant's amazing there at, at um, Glen Helen. So if he goes in with the confidence that he's got, and if he does have the fitness ability, you know, he's never been in the best shape of his life, but he's always in really good shape. So if he goes in with that kind of mentality, that fitness, there's no reason why the Monster Energy Kawasaki team can't go 1-2, Eli Tomac, Josh Grant. And then you could even throw in Jason Anderson. They might have a little chip on his shoulder. You might put Jason Anderson before Marvin Muskan um, or flip a coin between them. So it's almost a really tight niche rear between Jason Anderson and uh, Josh Grant and Marvin Muskan. It's going to be a good race, that's for sure. She's on her way to recovery. Thanks for the update, Keith. Um, thank you guys for coming out as well. Did Millsaps ride? No, Millsaps did not ride. He is injured, I believe. I don't remember why, but I think I remember reading something a while back. Um, yeah, he's, he's injured for something. I forget what, but... Keith said she had surgery on her femur and all fixed, already walking a bit. Damn. You got to love modern day medicine right there. You wreck at 4 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. You're walking at 4 o'clock on a Monday afternoon, and you're ready to race by the next Sunday. Sounds like a great, great, great thing. No wrist surgery. Cool. Um, all right. So back to it. That's my top top picks for the 450 class Glen Helm. What do you guys think is going to happen? Let me know as in the comments as I'll keep going. Maybe back late in the series. Bobby Bam Man, CJ, big shout out to you. Your boy Paul for a great call Sunday at Tampa MX from Shy Shy Bam 87. Hey, we appreciate that and we tried to give the love right back. We we mentioned the weekend Wednesday weekend race report all weekend or all weekend long at PAX track. So, um, oh yeah, yeah. I got you, Paul. Uh, so Millsap's out with a wrist injury. Joe Willer says Tomac Anderson Muskin. That's his picks. So quick, uh, recap of what we had going down this week. And we're going to try to keep this to an hour long show tonight, but PAX track was round four of the Florida Georgia championship. Man, it was a great time. The whole facility, the whole crew out at PAX Track did a great job getting the track groomed up. And in Bunnell, Florida, where PAX Track is located, we've been in a severe drought like the rest of Florida. We haven't had rain in about three months. What happens? Right at the end of about Moto 20, we had 24 motos, almost 300 entries again. Phenomenal um, entry count. We continue to grow. So thank you all for supporting the Florida Georgia and the Florida Motocross Series. It's been a, a pleasure bringing this thing together, and it's been epic success. But right around maybe 18, 19, 20, dude, it downpours for like 45 minutes and literally flooded the track out. But they went out there, and they made that track back in like absolutely amazing condition where it looked fun. I really wanted to get out there and ride. So big shout-out to uh, PAX Track, Kyle Farnell, the whole team that – that put in the effort out there and got the job done. The Pee Wee track was epic. We talk about it, I mentioned a hundred times over, but if you were there this weekend, you would see why I continue to say it. You know, I know a lot of tracks don't have the room or, or can't build a Pee Wee track or whatever, but if you get the chance to go race and you have a kid on a PW50 or a 50 like I do, and you go to a 50 track, the racing lends itself crazy. It's so amazing to watch how these kids race on a 50 track. It almost looks like some of the pro races, the battle, the battle, the battle and in and out. They can actually race on a little track where they get on a big track. If we would have put 50s on the big track at PAX, one of them would have made it around probably. Um, the rest we'd have had to pick up and the race would have been how fast can a parent get to their kid to pick them up, to push them, to get to the next place to fall down, to pick them back up. So uh, it was it was great racing all around. Keith Ulrich, I mean, from Stellar Max was throwing down some hot laps. We had Barry McCarty out there. We had a lot of quick vets out there this weekend, which was pretty cool. Um, some great battles with Barry McCarty and Keith Ulrich this weekend. We had, uh, what do we have? 12, 11, I have to check. 
11 or 12 in the open money class, so we had a really good open money battle going down. Keith Ulrich says 333.25. You're a very smart man, Keith. That's what it, I would say 333.25 for sure. Um, this weekend coming up, we got the youth qualifier at Gatorback Nationals. And then back to Andrew's question with the MXGP coming to the States at Gatorback, who's racing amateur day. I, I definitely am thinking about it. I do need to get, I mean, obviously before I put in a, a effort at a race like that, I got to get better and back in shape and start training a little bit. I've been on that, you know, the very relaxed diet program going on. Um, so I need to put in some work before I get back out there, but it, it is on our radar. We are going to be there. Hopefully the motostop stop tracks, I will be there to vend it no matter what, as we'll be at the Loretta Lynn's qual, uh, region, what it, youth regional this weekend. Uh, so we should have a good time. We'll see a lot of you guys out there. Next round for the Florida, Georgia, Florida motocross series is going to be June 4th at Bosswick Creek MX park. Something you guys don't want to miss out. Obviously, I know they made a few track changes. If you guys haven't been out there, maybe you should check them out. Something pretty cool, something a little different. Yeah, Paul, amateur day is what we're talking about at the MXGP. Um, I believe it's Friday is amateur day. So, motocross and supercross. Keith Ulrich says, I need that too. <laughs> Keith, you're still throwing down, buddy. Um, Friday and Saturday is going to be amateur is what Andrew's saying. So he's got an inside line out there, uh, with the FMG ride day. Pretty cool. You guys make sure you check out the FMG ride day as well. Something cool. They get together. They bring a whole group to a different track, throw down. They have an awesome whip competition. Just really good time out there for sure. I got to attend some of them. I wish I could attend more, but with my schedule, it doesn't really win to me going out to all these cool events. I got work, 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 slave drive, you know try to make that money so we can go ride some dirt bikes. Um, what else you guys thinking? We're going to try to wrap this thing up pretty soon. Once again, don't forget to tune in to uh, the weekend Wednesday race report over at NDA Action Sports. Just Google it. Paul Fleming and Poi Dog himself are going to be on there. Ben's probably going to be in the back. I think Ben is really the genius of the whole situation. He sits in the back and he operates and he runs everything. I think Poi Dog tries to take credit, but I think Ben is really the... the the brains behind it all. So uh, you make sure you check that out for sure. As always, we got to thank everybody that helps us out there. Carl, Live Ruthless. We got to thank um, HBD Moto Graphics. Everybody that comes on board with us, the Big Deal Productions, Motostop Trackside Parts and Accessories. Wednesday Weekend Report. Thanks, Paul. About 10 minutes to an hour too late. I've done screwed it up 100 times. And I don't know why. Ryder Gwynn and Logan did kill it this weekend. Where did my phone go? John Mortenberg. Ryder Gwynn and Logan killed it in Tennessee, Thunder Valley. They did. And I got one of the coolest pictures. Um, they both had their Motostop Elite Rider shirt on. Got up there and uh, were crushing it. So I appreciate that picture, John. Called Poi Dog out and he jumps in. Hey, what are you doing to me over there, producer? All right, what are you screwing? They, they wait to the last part of the show and screw everything up over here, okay? All right, we're good. Look at that. Bam! Just like that. He's actually our voice is what Paul Fleming said. <laughs> Point Ox said stupid work. I agree. Although I love my job. Uh, I don't know if you guys got to see something. I did something really cool. We'll talk a little bit about personal here. Um, on Friday... Snap on tools, who I, I work for is you know the bread and butter, what pays the bills. We gave away fifty thousand dollars worth of a uh, tool package, tool, um, toolbox, tool package, everything. And I got to go out and personally be the one to deliver it to the young kid, about 22, 23 year old kid in Jacksonville that won it. So it was pretty amazing. Poi Dog said, Stupid work, can I start over? I can't, Poi, but you can go to themotostopshow.com and you can catch all of our archives. And if you're at work and you're not allowed to get on your phone, get you some Bluetooth headphones and check us out at uh, TuneIn, iTunes, Stitcher Radios, all in a podcast form. And just so you guys know that when I, uh, you know, we do these live broadcasts, obviously we're getting big views, but we still have our YouTube page, which is a fully produced 
video. Sometimes we add in more stuff, so you might want to check that out as well. Got to give a big shout out to my sister, Jessica Harris on there. Um, Aiden Rourke on there, Carrie, uh, Carrie Gwynn. So yeah, love those Moto Stop shirts. Carrie, we love you guys and all of our riders out there. I love at the end of the show, everybody starts getting on and it's like so hard to wrap up, but the producer's looking at me like, cut it off or we're going to cut you. So yeah, great show. This is Ryder. Oh, my little buddy Ryder in there. Ryder Gwynn, dude, congratulations on an epic ride up there. You and uh, little Logan Morenberg put down some great results. We appreciate it. We'll probably see you, Ryder, we're going to see you this weekend at Gatorback, or I imagine we are. I don't know. I don't think you were hurt for that one. Keith, thank you, sir. Some are better than others. Um, normally, we do have a co-host on here. I don't know if this is your first time jumping on or not, but it... Uh, we were trying some different software tonight, so we went solo. We didn't know how it was going to work out, and we didn't want to disappoint anybody. But we do have some, some guests lined up. We do have some pros lined up uh, to do some phone interviews again like we did. Uh, we'll probably have BBTMX, probably have Carl back in the studio very soon. Um, we're trying to get Grind MX. I'm glad I started talking. Grind MX, we forgot. The producer forgot to yell at me to do the Grind MX segment of the show. Post job. So if you guys don't know what Grind MX, make sure you check out grindmx.com for the latest and greatest, some of the baddest pictures you've ever seen and some information on uh, the, the Supercross. My Grind MX rider was obviously Eli Tomac. Um, just the way he rode throughout Hangtown, he didn't have to grind. He just had to do what Eli Tomac did, and he got himself a 1-1. So what I would like to see him do, you know, normally we picked a rider that really had to grind and grit to get through the whole season. I'd like to see or get through the race to win. I'd like to see Eli Tomac grind until the end of the season and become the champion. Um, so he's our Grind MX Rider of the Week. Make sure you guys check out GrindMX.com. Timothy, we appreciate that. We appreciate all you guys jumping on. Hope you guys enjoy it. It's something fun we like to do for you. Obviously, I like to talk about motocross, supercross, anything to, related to do with dirt bike. Um, Bruce Kramer, we seen, I seen your post uh, with the Nikki Hayden shout out. If you guys tuned in a little later, make sure you check out the Moto Stop. We did talk about Nikki Hayden uh, when we first started, as well as Ryan Dungey's retirement. So look forward to a lot of great stuff coming out of the Moto Stop show, the Big Deal Production House. As always, make sure you follow everything they do. Big Deal Production, they have in the life of a, a production life. Um, you can like it, click it, subscribe. A lot of cool videos. They do make a lot of videos of young kids out there. If you want to just check out some cool stuff, subscribe to our YouTube page. Make sure you click the like button, share. Tell us what you think. If you don't like it, we're okay with that. We'll get better. Let us know. We can only get better if you tell us, right? Uh, we appreciate everybody out there. My name is CJ Harris. I'm the host that tries to bring you the most excitement in the motocross community. It's been fun. It's been real. Peace out.